times and Bible prophecy and yeah. the coming apocalypse. And... Live from the what's left of the apocalypse. Yeah, li- li- <laughs> live from the last days. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's great to have you back with us. Yeah. Uh, Chris Morley, I know you've been looking forward to this one tonight. Welcome, bro. Mm. Uh, Rachel Weatherly. Hi, Rachel. Lovely to see you. Uh, Pe- Linda... Who else have we got? Craig Harrison from New South Wales, I think, aren't you, Craig? It's great to have you mm. with us. Chantel, again, from Field of Dreams. Good to have some crow eaters on board with uh, us tonight. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's exciting. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. So, uh, tonight, mm. after like six weeks of... Oh, intro. Yes. <laughs> and definitions and yeah. laying stuff out, we're actually going to get into it. And we're not starting in Revelation, are we? No, we're not. <laughs> we're not going to be starting in Revelation. But mm. before we do get into it, let's have a word of prayer. Yep. Father, we thank you that you have chosen us, mm-hmm. your people, to be here for such a time as this. And Lord, we're really excited. We're looking forward to the day that you come for us, to catch us up, to sweep us away Mm. and lord with such excitement and anticipation we look forward to that day but father i pray that as we spend time around your scripture tonight that you would give us wisdom and understanding and you would unlock the scriptures for us we pray against anything that would try to cause uh, blindness or deafness Mm. or or anything that would shut people's spirits off Mm. from what we we have to say tonight lord god Use Ben and I, Lord Jesus, for the sake of your glory, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So I guess, Ben, before we get into this, of course, we want to remind everyone again Mm -hmm. of the Berean principle. Yes. So the Berean principle. Uh, Take what you hear, uh, you know, give it the benefit of the doubt, and then go do your own homework to see whether it's true. That's exactly right. Yeah. And uh, probably... If ever it should be said, it's mm. for the book that we're going to be diving into tonight. Yeah, there is so many stuff written about the book of Daniel and what it means and what it could imply and all that kind of stuff. So, yes, you know, take everything, you know, we're not scholars, we're not anything of like that, but we are presenting what we have seen. Yeah, uh, and while... Uh, we may not have any official training in this. Mm. 40 years. Mm-hmm. 40 years I've been studying this subject. That's longer than I've been alive, Todd. <laughs> well, that's, <laughs> that's about as long as I've been in this subject. I've, <laughs> I've loved this from, from when I was a kid. Yeah. And uh, so I'm really looking forward to sharing with you. Cliff Mayer, good to see you, bro. Yeah. Uh, Josh Walsley. Ew. Great to see you online, man. Uh, so... One of the things about studying end times Bible prophecy, if you mm. want to understand the book of Revelation, mm. for every verse yeah. that is listed in the, the book of Revelation, there is at least two references yeah. to other places in Scripture. And this is the thing. You, if you think about the book of Revelation, it's like the, it's the grand finale of Scripture. So they, you know, if you think about it like a TV show, it's like it's going to have callbacks to every major character in prophecy Absolutely. leading up to this. And so, you know, it's this grand finale. And so to make sense of what you are reading at, you know, the grand finale, you kind of need to watch the whole season to make sense of it. <laughs> exactly. That's really well said. <laughs> and one of the, the key books mm. to understanding Revelation is understanding the book of Daniel. Mm. Now we're going to spend the next... Uh, three or four sessions mm. just looking at what's in the book of Daniel. And as I've said, to start off this, mm. you can't study Revelation mm-hmm. without studying Daniel. Mm. So the first thing that I, I want to do as kind of like um, a broad stroke warm up yeah. is I want to have a look at eight things that Daniel saw mm. that John also saw in the book of Revelation. We're just going to put them up against each other yep. to have a look at. All right, so um, uh, 
I'm going to put this up on the screen. We're just going to have a quick read through this, and then we're going to have a look at each of the scriptures side by side, mm. uh, just to get a handle on, on what each says. So do you want to run us through the list, Ben? Yeah. So both saw a final seven years of man's rule on the earth. Mm-hmm. Both saw a final 42 months of history. Mm-hmm. Both identified the Antichrist as a beast. Mm-hmm. Both revealed a time of great trouble. Ooh. Mm. Both saw Michael the Archangel. Yeah. Both saw ten kings in the final empire. Mm. Both saw a resurrection of the dead. Interesting. And both saw the Lord rule in his kingdom. Very interesting. Some, pr- you know, some pretty statistically improbable. improbable stuff to get the same. Yeah, exactly. So let's uh, dive into these scriptures. We're going to have a look at each of them. Uh, how do you want to play this? Maybe you do the Old Testament, you do Daniel, yep. and I'll do Revelation. How's Sounds that good. Sound? All right. I like that. So here's the first one. Seven years of a man's rule on earth. Then shall confirm then he shall confirm. then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week but in the middle of the week he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering and on the wing of abominations he shall be one who makes desolate even until the consummation which is determined is poured out on the desolation on the desolate yeah right mm. it's harder to read from i there know than it's, mine, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> side by side it's yeah, like this yeah. font's even smaller <laughs> so uh, <laughs> revelation 11 2 says but leave out the court which is outside the temple and do not measure it for it, it has been given to the gentiles and they will tread the holy city underfoot for 42 months so wow. here we have both are telling us that there is going to be a um, seven years of mm. of man ruling over the, the this last portion in human history. Yeah, right. Alrighty. So uh, the the second one we're going to have a look at mm-hmm. is the final forty two months of history, mm-hmm. and uh, we're. We're just waiting for Britt to get back to uh, put up the next slide. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Then I heard the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river when he held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven and swore by him who lived forever that it shall be for a time, times, and half a time. How long is that? That's a year, two years, three years, and a half. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Time is time is one. A year. Times is two. Two years. And a half is a half. Yeah. Yeah. So that term time is um, we'll we'll see that a lot. Yeah. Okay. And it's a colloquialism of the day mm-hmm. for a year. And we have, we have in our language, mm-hmm. singular and plural. Yeah. But in Aramaic and Greek, they also have dual words. Yeah. So yeah. ones so, that are only two. That's right. Yeah. So in our English Bible, mm. those dual words have been translated in, in this instance. As is times. Times. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so where we would read that as being an indeterminate number, mm-hmm. because the word in the in this case the Aramaic is mm. a dual, it means two. Yeah, I remember yeah. learning that in Greek. It's pretty pretty crazy the kind of conjugations that they have together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and when the power of the holy people has been completely shattered, all these things shall be finished. And in Revelation twelve six we read, mm. Then the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared by God, that they should feed her there 1,260 days. What does that work out to, Todd? That works out to three and a half years by a 360-day calendar. Yes. Which is something that mm. people 
uh, may miss. Yeah, we run by a three hundred and sixty five day calendar. Because because the Gregorian calendar calendar that we use now was brought in under Pope Gregory, exactly. who was like a few hundred years, well, many hundreds of years after Daniel, but a few hundred years after the Book of Revelation was written. That's exactly right. Yeah. And prior to that, uh, other cultures had all sorts of convoluted ways of mm. dealing with the the drag of having a 360 day calendar while we all know that it's the the time around the sun is 365 and a quarter days yeah which is why we get our leap year yeah that's our convolution yes, <laughs> yes. um for instance the hebrews threw in an extra month every now and then mm -hmm. so they, they had had ways of dealing with it but all of these numbers mm -hmm take into account a 360 day calendar that's right yeah all right the next one is both identified the antichrist as a beast so mm. daniel 7 7 after this i saw the night visit visions and beheld a fourth beast dreadful and terrible exceedingly strong it had huge iron teeth it was devouring breaking in pieces and trampling the residue with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Now we're going to spend some time looking at that beast tonight. Mm. Revelation 13, 1, 2. Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. Now, the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a, a lion. Remember that. Mm. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. Okay, so mm. both identify the Antichrist as a beast. Next, mm. both Daniel and John see a time of great trouble coming. Daniel 12.1. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since the, there was a nation. Wow. And in Revelation 12, it says, And war broke out in heaven. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, just in case you don't know who it's talking mm -hmm. about, who deceives the whole world. He, cast to, he was cast to earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, mm. for the devil has come down to you, having a great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. Mm. If ever there was a time of great trouble, mm -hmm. I think it's when Satan is cast down to the earth. Yep. <laughs> All yeah. right. Both see Michael the archangel. Mm. So the first we're going to read is uh, Daniel 12, 1 and 2. And at that time, Michael shall stand up. The great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And Revelation twelve seven tells us, and war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. It's talking about the similar things. The similar, same characters are popping up at the same time. Exactly. And the reason I'm pointing this out is that I just want to pay attention to the fact that so much of what we read in Daniel, mm. we see coming out in Revelation. Mm. So um, next we've got ten kings in the final empire. The ten horns are ten kings. Who shall arise from this kingdom? And another shall arise up after them. He shall be different from the first ones and shall subdue three kings. Very interesting. Mm. In Revelation 13, 1, Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. Mm. So, yeah. And on his horns, ten crowns, and on his heads, a blasphemous name. So we've got this rise of ten. Mm. Wonder what this ten is. Yeah. We're going to have a look at that. Let's see. Um, and the resurrection of the dead, Daniel 2. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and to shame, some to shame and everlasting contempt. Yes, I yeah. want to be in the former. 
Not the latter. <laughs> <laughs> Revelation 20. Then I saw a great white throne and I saw the dead. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. And they were judged, each one according to his works. So, mm, yeah. Same thing. Same thing. And then we have, as the final one, the Lord rules in his kingdom. And behold, one like the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all nation, all people, nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away. Mm. And Revelation 19, 15 to 16 says, And he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Wow. So there you have it. Mm -hmm. We're looking at eight things Daniel and John both saw in their vision. So we mm. can see that there is a great deal of parallel yeah. with all these different symbols that we see in Revelation also being seen in the book of Daniel. That's now, right. Now, why is that really important? Because if you want to understand what those symbols are, mm -hmm. because we've already got them listed here in Daniel, mm -hmm. and they're told to us what they are in Daniel, we can mm -hmm. then put that onto these these. Yeah. pictures that we see in yeah. Revelation. And you, and you need to have the both pictures to kind of make sense so of the, what they're actually talking about. The law of first mention. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the way that the law of first mention works is when you see something for the first time in Scripture, mm. that's going to kind of like set the precedent mm. of what it's going to mean later on. That's right. The other thing too is that when the scripture clearly tells us what something is, mm. you don't need to seek any further meaning mm. to understand what it is. You know, this is this, and then it's just like, well, we could mean this other thing. And people like to do that. Yeah. But the thing that we've got to remember here is that God is trying to portray something to us in a way that we can understand it and receive it. Mm. So he's not trying to hide truth from us. Yeah, but he's trying to deliver it in a way that we're going to be able to perceive. Mm. So, with a lot of this, as a literalist, mm -hmm. we are using we we we're, we're seeking to understand the tools that are being used in in uh, communicating to us mm. what it is that God's trying to say. Yeah. Okay. So, does that mean that we use allegory? Yes, we do, but. Mm. We are, we are seeking to use these um, metaphors and similes and so forth to help us under, understand something concrete. And that's right. And, then, and a lot of the time, these similes and, and things are actually spelled out yes. already. Yes. They're not an abstract thing that we can insert our own interpretation on. Yes. There is precedent, as you said to what these things actually mean. Yes, that's right. Chantel has just said, interesting that the dragon had angels. Yes, of course, they're fallen <laughs> angels. That's right. And in in the rest of that chapter, it actually tells us about how those angels mm. are taken to to earth. And, and uh, there is a difference between demons and fallen angels. Mm -hmm. they, they are different creatures. Species, yep. Yes. <laughs> and... Uh, but yes, when Satan f falls to mm. earth, all of those principalities, powers, rulers and authorities that Paul talks about mm. that rule at the moment uh, in the second heavens, the prince of the power of the air, they are also brought to the earth. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Now, mm. this is a, as I put here, it is a study in literal fulfillment mm. of a picture. That's so right. we're, we're going to have a look at this scripture and kind of unpack what what took place. Now, the story, the back story is this. Mm. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon has a dream. Yeah. And it's greatly disturbed him. Mm. So he, he calls for all of his magicians and soothsayers and clever people mm -hmm. um, 
of whom Daniel is amongst. Mm. And he says to them, I want you guys to interpret my dream. Yep. And the, they say, that's fine, O king. Tell well, us what it is. Tell us what the dream <laughs> is. And he says, no, no, no. We're not going to do it that way. What I want you to do is I want you to tell me the dream and then interpret it. Oh, and by the way. Yeah, if you don't do this, I'm going to murder your families. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the pressure's on. Yeah. And as a result of this, all of them go, Daniel? Yeah, yeah. And they kind of throw it to him to, to deal with. And so Daniel, in an effort to, um, well, basically to protect the lives of all these people around him, mm -hmm. goes and inquires of God and then comes back to the king, which is where we're going to pick up the story in Daniel 2, mm. verses 31 to 35. And uh, I'll, I'll have a read of this one. Mm. In your vision, your majesty, you saw standing before you a huge shining statue of a man. It was a frightening sight. The head of the statue was made of fine gold. Its chest and arms were silver. Its belly and thighs were bronze. Its legs were iron. Its feet were a combination of iron and baked clay. As you watched, a rock was cut from a mountain, but not by human hands. It struck the feet of iron and clay, smashing them to bits. The whole statue was crushed into small pieces of iron, clay, bronze, silver and gold. Then the wind blew them away without a trace like chaff on a threshing floor. Mm. But the rock that knocked the statue down became a great mountain that covered the whole earth. That's a right. very strange dream indeed. Yeah. Now, what I want to show you here is... Now, I've got this on its side to kind of uh, just simply to make it fit. Yeah. Is a, a picture of this this um, this uh, statue. statue yeah, yeah. That, that he dreamed about. Now, mm. the first thing that we're going to have a look at is the metals that, that are used in this image. Mm. Because the metals themselves start to tell us a little bit about what they represent. Now, of course, if you're looking at this screen, it's all a giveaway. Right? Yeah. Because I've got the chart and I've got it all laid out there. Mm -hmm. But I want to show you how um, those of us who have studied this have come to these conclusions. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, why the metals? Mm -hmm. So, first of all, gold. The head of gold. Yeah. Now, Daniel already tells us... Mm. The head of gold is you, O oh, king. king. Yeah, okay. the greatest of all. Well, yeah, so, <laughs> so he's, he's already identifying the head of gold represents Babylon. It's also mm. interesting to note that Babylon is the empire that took all the gold from Solomon's temple. There yeah, had never true. been so much gold yeah. as what Israel had during the reign of Solomon. That's right. And it all ends up in Babylon. Yeah, which is it's interesting. key in there. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that yes. is interesting. It is indeed. Because that's the thing. Gold was so commonplace that silver was practically worthless. Yes, yes. exactly. That's right. So second, the, the chest of silver mm. um, the, represents the Medo-Persians. Mm -hmm. And how do we come to that? Well, the Persians collected all their taxes in, in silver. silver. So, so silver was currency. That's right. Now, of course, when Daniel says this, mm. it's future mm. for him. Um, but he tells him there is going to be, again, it's specifically stated, there is going to be another kingdom which will come after you, mm. and that will be the Medo-Persians. Yeah. Then there will be another kingdom mm. which is unnamed in the... Because that, that was now, well now we're talking about hundreds of years old. That's right. Two yeah. empires hence. Mm. And uh, it's a um, uh, torso of bronze. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting to note that the Greeks used bronze or brass weapons mm -hmm. and armor. So there's our bronze. And then... Legs of iron mm -hmm. and Romans used iron weapons for tools of war. That's interesting. Yes, very mm. interesting. So 
The first two are identified by Daniel, mm -hmm. but the others, as we look at, as we start to look at the pieces of the puzzle, mm -hmm. they become, uh, uh, well, obvious in that sense. That's right. And and the thing is, is that we know that these are empires. Why? Mm -hmm. Because the first two are empires. That's right. And in, in fact, Greece gets named later on in Daniel with the mm. dream of the sheep and the goat. Indeed. Yeah. That's right. So, and, and when we look at our, our little picture here, you'll see that um, we, we've we got the, the ram and the goat listed there mm -hmm. uh, alongside the Greek empire is the, the he goat. Mm. With the four horns. <laughs> yes. And so the, we are going to have a look at these beasts in a moment. Mm -hmm. But... Um, Let's not get the term, the beasts that are listed in Daniel's property, confused with the beast. The, yes. And, the, yeah, that's, and a, that's a different creature altogether. Exactly. But, again, we see a whole bunch of parallels between Daniel with what he says mm. about this beast that's coming this, and, and what we see in Revelation. And I want to just go through those and so again i've got these on the screen for you mm. so first of all the king mm. right in daniel 3 we've got the king of babylon yeah but in revelation we've got a new king of babylon because this is the thing when it's very interesting that the book of revelation harks back to babylon as this big bad guy because the city of babylon hadn't been a place of power since the medes and the persians no no, and this is really interesting. We're going to start to unpack this mm. as we go through. The second thing is the image, the, the mm. statue, right? In Daniel 3, it's an image for worship. Mm -hmm. In Revelation, we also have an image for worship. The image of the beast That's right. must be worship. Uh, in Daniel 3, we have um, Daniel being, and, and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, rather, being thrown into the fire because they won't bow down and worship the mm. the statue. Uh, in Revelation, if you won't worship the beast, what happens? You get your head cut off. Indeed you do. Uh, it's also really interesting that mm. in Daniel 3, the size of this statue is 60 cubits high by 6 cubits wide. Hmm. And the beast's number is... is 166. Yes. Yeah, right. So it's just interesting that in both we've got Sixes. 666. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just interesting. Um, there's persecution in Daniel 3. Mm -hmm. These Jews, mm -hmm. these boys that the, have been taken. The, the only three that didn't bow down. Yes. And they get persecuted by being mm -hmm. thrown in the fire. And in Revelation, we also have persecution of the Jews in mm. Revelation 12. That's right. Uh, the in, in Daniel, there's the deliverance for the Jews, mm -hmm. which is the fourth man in the fire. Yep. Hallelujah for the fourth man in the fire. <laughs> and in Revelation, we also have Messiah coming and delivering. That's right. Uh, we have in Daniel 3, idolatry is defeated. This... Mm -hmm. This thing that is being set up, this statue, mm. has been defeated. And uh, in Revelation, of course, we have the beast and his image are also defeated mm. by Jesus when he comes mm -hmm. with the hosts of heaven. That's right. His feet touch the Mount of Olives mm -hmm. and with the word. Mm. He destroys all of the, the, the armies that have come against him. That's right. I. Uh, and finally, in the end, the people in Babylon end mm. up worshipping God. Mm. And in the end of Revelation, of those who survive this great period of trial, mm. they also end up turning to worship God. Wow. So yeah. again, we have parallel after parallel. Mm. And sometimes I think if this is not pointed out, mm. you can kind of, because they're so far apart, yeah. you may not tend to pick these things up. Yeah, it's, it's interesting about that story of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego with the, with the image made of gold, because I've read somewhere that 
this was an act of King Nebuchadnezzar to try and re reshape history as mm-hmm. was told to him but in that dream. Yes. So instead of just having the head as gold, all of it was gold. Yes. And if everyone worshipped him as a god king, then his empire will last forever. Yeah. Which is kind of a par- parallel to what we see the beast doing at the end of the age. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Seeking the world to worship him. And, and to try to, re- to rewrite history. Yeah. Yes. Because he knows he's going to be replaced. Yes. But it's like, if I dig my heels in, I can make this last forever. And in both instances... They don't work. No. <laughs> Chronic failure. Yeah. All right. So getting back to our picture, we're now going to have a look at these four beasts. Mm. Now, again, Daniel, as he has these visions, um, he we can start to see... First, we have a lion with wings. Mm. And do you remember that the fourth beast had the face of a lion? That's right. Yeah. The, the one described in Revelation, yeah. Yes. Um, the the second beast is a bear. Mm. And... The beast in Revelation has bare feet. Yes. And then the, the in the Greek empire, the, the, the next beast, the, we have a leopard, but it's a leopard with four heads. Mm. And a lot of people go, why has the leopard got four heads? Well... Alexander the Great wore a leopard skin Mm -hmm. as his insignia. That's right. And when he died, because he didn't leave an heir, his... Four generals, yeah. That's right. His four generals broke up and we have uh, Cassander, Mm -hmm. Lysimachus, Seleucus, and Ptolemy Mm -hmm. are the four generals that end up leading the four quadrants of the empire that's Mm -hmm. broken up as a result of that so we have a leopard with four Four heads heads. yeah and then we have this strange beast that that comes up which is like a morph yeah and uh, so we're going to pick up with that uh reading from daniel 7 and we're reading verse 7 and 8 after that in my vision at night I looked and there before me was a fourth beast terrifying and frightening and very powerful it had large iron teeth it crushed and devoured its victims and trampled underfoot whatever was left it was different from all the former beasts and it had ten horns when while I was thinking about the horns there before me was another horn a little one which came up among them and three of the first horns were uprooted before it this horn had eyes like the eyes of a human being and a mouth that spoke boastfully what the heck it's like you got this mecha godzilla coming out of the ocean i know know. it's crazy (laughs) let's just let's just break this down a little This terrifying and frightening beast had large iron teeth. Mm -hmm. It crushed and devoured its victims underfoot. And it has ten horns. Mm. And among the ten horns, another little eleventh horn Mm. comes up. And as it comes up, three of the, the original Ten yep. horns, yeah, fall out, fall out, or uprooted, as it mm. puts it here. Um, and this little horn had eyes like the eyes of a human being and a boastful mouth. He's got now. He's got two faces. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> this, this is bizarre. <laughs> now the first thing is we know that what is this beast? Mm-hmm. It is an empire. Yeah. Now how do we know that it's an empire? Because all the previous three were empires. Right. Yeah. So we now understand that this thing that we are looking at ha- is mm. an empire. Mm-hmm. Now, we also know that the horn, which we're not going to go into tonight, but, but the horns represent leaders. Mm. And how do we know this? We find that out from the ram and the goat. That's right. So... We know then that what we're being told is 
that this is an empire mm. that has um, somehow has ten leaders in it. Mm. All right, so let's let's kind of break this down a little bit. Um, verse nineteen to twenty six of Daniel, we read this. I wanted to know the meaning of the fourth beast, which are different from all the others. And most terrifying with its iron teeth, mm-hmm. iron, mm-hmm. like its spears and all its swords, yes, mm-hmm. and bronze cords, right? right. So we, we're hearkening back to the statue metals, yeah, that's right. Okay, and the beast that crushed and devoured its victims and trampled underfoot whatever was left. Verse 20 I also wanted to know about the ten horns on its head and about the other horn that came up before which three of them fell. The horn that looked more imposing than all the others, that had eyes and a mouth that spoke boastfully. Now, mm. you go, I would want to know that too, right? Yep. If, I'm, if I'm watching this, Daniel's perplexed, mm-hmm. and is he, in writing this down, he's going, so I'm looking at this, and I didn't understand. I want to know what it is. This is one of the great things about Bible prophecy is God wants you to know too. Yeah, that's it. Right? He's not showing you this stuff to hide it from you. Mm. He wants you to know. Verse 21. As I watched, this horn was waging war against the holy people and defeating them. Right. Okay, so okay. who's the holy people? Now, remember, we're talking Daniel, right? Yeah. So this is not the church people. This, this is, is Daniel. Old Testament. Context. Yeah, Old right? Testament. So the holy people... That would be Israel. Israel. So the horn is waging war against the holy people. Mm. So that, how does that work? Who, under normal circumstances, are we saying that we've got this horn that's running around fighting a nation? <laughs> no, there's a little rhino horn that's commanding the troops. Yes. <laughs> of, of course we're not saying that. We're... What it's telling us is that this horn represents a leader, a, a leader, king, yeah, a someone general. who is who is is heading up mm. a an army of some description mm. to come against the people of Israel. Verse twenty two: Until the Ancient of Days came and pronounced judgment in favor of the holy people of the Most High. And the time come when they possessed the, the kingdom. kingdom. All right. Now, mm. possessing the kingdom. Now, of course, oh, well, we're all in the kingdom now, right? But again, mm. context. Yeah. Because we last week we talked about the two kinds of kingdom. That's right. And the kingdom that Daniel's talking about, that Daniel understands, the church is like 500 years away from even coming into existence. That's right. So when Daniel hears about the kingdom, he's taught, he's thinking about the king of the Jews, the Messiah, the Messiah sitting on the throne mm-hmm. with Israel, the premier nation of the world. All that's been prophesied mm-hmm. by by the prophets that have come before. Mm-hmm. Daniel's envisaging that. So this is telling us that the time mm-hmm. that all this takes place is in the time approaching the establishment of that kingdom. Well, which, yeah, sets a time frame. Right, exactly. Now, one of the things that I love about the scripture, whenever it comes to Bible prophecy, is if you want to know what scripture might be talking about in prophecy... Mm. Read a few more verses. That's right. <laughs> because usually the explanation is already there. Mm. And here we find in verse 23, uh, if you'd like to read for us. Yeah. He gave me this explanation. Oh, oh that's handy. <laughs> so we're actually going to find out exactly what's going on. Yes. The fourth beast is a fourth kingdom that will appear on earth. There we go. It's an empire. It will be different from all the other kingdoms and will devour the whole earth. Hang on a minute. Now, when it says the whole earth, do we are we talking about the known world as it was then or the whole planet? 
That's a good question. Mm. And whether it's the former or the latter, we're talking about a significant portion of territory. Yeah. Yes. The trampling it down and crushing it. The ten horns are ten kings. There we go. So now we know what a horn is. Yep. Who will come from this kingdom. After them, another king will arise. Different from the earlier ones, he will subdue three kings. Right. Mm. So we now know what these horns are, that they are kings, that there is an eleventh king that's going to rise and he's going to forcefully deal with three of them. Three of them. Interesting. Mm. All right, verse 25. He will speak against the Most High and oppress his holy people and try to change the set times and laws. Mm. Try to rewrite history. Exactly. The holy people will be delivered into his hands for... Oh, time and half a time. Time, time times and, and a half, half a time. time. There it is again. Ah. Yeah. But the court will sit and his power will be taken away and completely destroyed forever. Mm. So this king that's going to come to power, the court will sit. Mm -hmm. What court? Well, we don't know, but at least at this point we don't. Mm -hmm. So if we don't know what something is, we read on. We read on. Then the sovereignty, power, and greatness of all the kingdoms under heaven will be handed over to the holy people of the Most High. His mm. kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom, and all rulers will worship and obey him. Mm. Right. So we learn a whole lot about this fourth beast. Yeah. So we know that this fourth beast, beast has iron teeth and bronze claws it has 10 hair horns on one head and there's an 11th horn that rises up and uproots three mm. it has eyes and a boastful mouth and we understand that it's talking about we understand now that this is a leader mm -hmm. um who is rose up to power and is very boastful yeah and took out three guys to get there exactly and three guys of 10 Mm. Which is really interesting. Mm. Defeating the holy people. The Ancient of Days pronounces judgment against him. Mm. And the people possess the kingdom of God. Mm. What we call the millennial kingdom. The thing that we've been talking about uh, yep. in previous weeks. So th this is a fourth kingdom. Mm -hmm. It's We're told that it's different to any of the other empires that's come before. Mm. And it says that it devours the whole earth. Yep. Now, I tend to agree that if it says the whole, you know, I take it as it says, mm -hmm. if it says the whole earth, it probably means the, the whole, whole earth. The whole planet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we know that horns are kings. Mm -hmm. He speaks out against the most high. He mm -hmm. So if he speaks against the most high, it means he is not for the most high. That's right. Yep. Uh, he oppresses the Jews. Mm. He tries to change times and laws and tries to rewrite history, as he put it. And he's, he, it is delivered over the course of time, times and half a time, three and a half years. That's right. When this collapses, it's completely destroyed forever, forever. at the conclusion of which mm -hmm. the kingdom, millennial kingdom, mm. comes to the earth. That's right. And which doesn't get replaced no never ever praise mm. the lord all right let's have a look now with now that we've got all of that background mm -hmm. let's have a look at revelation 13 That's one right. of what's considered one of the more difficult chapters yeah in revelation some of you might say it's all difficult <laughs> <laughs> but what i want to show you is that it's not that difficult when we've got these precedents yeah that are outlined for us that's right all right revelation 13 the dragon stood on the shore of the sea and i saw a beast coming out of the sea hang on, what a beast right and what's a beast an animal like a big monster no <laughs> what have we learned oh yes 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 no the a beast is a kingdom right yes yeah an empire yes <laughs> <laughs> um 
and it, and it had ten horns. Oh, okay. What are what are horns? Kings, leaders, right? Uh, and seven heads, right? Hmm. And what do we know about heads? That they represent leadership. They represent power and authority. Yeah, zones. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yep. Yeah. With ten crowns on its horns, and on each head a blasphemous name. Right. Hmm. So these leaders mm-hmm. are clearly not. For God. Now, isn't it interesting that, you know, blasphemy in scripture means a particular thing, doesn't it? Mm. It's not just something that's offensive to God. It's a particular thing that's offensive to God. Yes. Which yeah. is like to say, I am God. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So that's when, when you ever see blasphemy come up, mm. it's actually a particular thing. It's not just something that's offensive. Yeah. The beast I saw resembled a leopard. We've seen leopards before. And what did that represent? That represented the Greeks. The Greeks, yeah. But it had feet like those of a bear. Which is like the the Me- Medo Persians. Persians, yeah. And a mouth like that of a lion. Which means it's like the Babylonians. Okay. Mm-hmm. The dragon gave the beast his power. Okay. Now we know who the dragon is. That's because, Satan. That's Satan because that's clearly told to us yep. in the previous chapter. Yep. Yeah. And his throne and great authority. Right. So this empire mm. of ten leaders, mm-hmm. which ends up becoming what seven or eight mm. when you do the math, mm-hmm. they that is given power by Satan. Yeah. Right. One of the heads of the beast seemed to have a fatal wound, but the fatal wound had been healed. Now, hang on again. What are heads? Heads are regions of power. Right. So, we're not talking about a person Mm -hmm. having a wound. We're talking about a region of power Mm -hmm. taking a fatal wound. That's interesting. That is interesting. Hmm. But the fatal wound had been healed. The whole world was filled with wonder and followed the beast. Right. Mm. Okay. So if you're watching this now, you're going, okay, now this is starting to get interesting. (laughs) Because I've heard stories about this Antichrist getting, you know, clobbered and... Yeah, coming back from the dead. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Okay. And in fact, there were stories that Nero, Mm. because in, in, you know, around that time... Um, there were those who thought that Nero was the Antichrist. Well, he nearly fit the bill. Yeah. <laughs> and that it, Nero was going to come back from the dead. Right. As a result of this scripture. Mm, mm. Um, but he didn't show up. No, he's still dead. Yes. All right, so who then are these ten kingdoms? So... Let's uh, let's go back to Daniel. We're going to have a look at Daniel chapter 2, mm. verse 44. And let's see if we can learn some more here. In the time of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed. Right. So the time of, of these, these kings, kings, these ten kings, mm-hmm. it's going to happen at the time when God sets up his kingdom and that will never be destroyed. Yeah. So this is immediately before... The The end. Yes, the establishment of the kingdom of God. Yeah. Nor will it be left to another people. Of course. It will crush all those kingdoms and bring them to an end. But it will itself endure forever. This is the meaning of the vision of the rock cut out of the mountain, but not by human hands. A rock that broke the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver and the gold pieces. The great God has shown the king what will take place in the future. The dream is true and its interpretation is trustworthy. Right. So we're going to have a look at some of the theories Mm. around what these ten kingdoms are. Now, the first one is almost a joke, Mm -hmm. but um, let's have a look at it. So there's this idea that the ten kingdoms were the kingdoms that came and overthrew the Roman Empire. So the Goths and those guys. Exactly. (laughs) So that the Ten Kingdoms 
um, were the Franks, the Alemanni, Lombards, Swabia, Anglo-Saxons, Burgundians, the Visigoths, the Harudi, the Vandals, and the Ostrogoths. And as we know from today, they have had such an impact on the world. <laughs> well, <laughs> now the thing is, is that this theory says that while the Harudi, the Vandals, and the Ostrogoths mm-hmm. all went extinct, okay? Oh, so there's your the three, three that fell. That's yeah. right. So then you're left with... Today, the Franks are, is France, the mm-hmm. Alemanni is Germany, the Lombards are Italy, the Anglo-Saxons are England, the Burgundians is Switzerland, and the Visigoths is Spain. Right. And so they're saying that, that these countries will be the ones that kind of rise to power, mm. um, and that the fact that they have come to power, mm-hmm. like today because they've been around since after the Roman Empire. Yeah, but the Roman Empire hasn't been a thing in so long. But that's the point, is that they're saying, this is a preterist view, that all these things have already ended, Mm. and the fact that these nations still stand, that that is the fulfilment of this prophecy. Right. Um, But, of course, uh, it's still missing a bit. Mm. which is them being put down mm-hmm. for the uh, the kingdom of God to be established. That's right. Because it's the thing. is like you've had these powers, you know, for a large part, they've waned. Yes. You know, England is not the British Empire anymore. Exactly. <laughs> and Portugal's not exactly a main player. Yeah. Neither is Switzerland. Yeah. <laughs> so um, there's... So that that's one idea. Mm. The second theory is, especially in the eighties, was mm. that it's going to be the European Union, mm. right? It was because, an interesting experience. Yeah, an experiment. Yeah, um, <laughs> and of course, you know, it it climbed its way to ten members, and everyone was going, "Oh, it's the ten kingdoms!" Mm-hmm. And then it went to eleven, yeah, and twelve, yeah, and fifteen, and But but now, here we are, we're we're sitting on the tail end of that. And again, Mm -hmm. the power of the European Union Union is actually waning. That's right. And so we're we're seeing nationalism on the rise again throughout Mm -hmm. Europe. Mm -hmm. And of course, Brexit taking place and... So it's and everyone wants to get rid of Greece, yeah. <laughs> whether so, they want to or not. <laughs> okay, so that theory is not working. Nah. The, the third theory, which might get some interest, especially nowadays, is the Islamic Brotherhood. Yeah, but where were they at the end of the Roman Empire? Well, well it didn't even exist. No. Um, and it didn't come around for hundreds of years later, like mm-hmm. two, two, uh, 250 years after the fall of the Roman Empire. Yeah. Um, but, okay, it's maybe a, it's a possibility. Mm. Um, but the Islamic Brotherhood, even at this point, is well and truly contained within the Middle mm. East. That's right. Uh, it's trying to press into Europe. Um, but it's a long way mm. from taking over the whole Earth. Yeah. Now, here's a a bigger theory that might work Mm -hmm. is what's known as the Club of Rome. Club of Rome. Now, for all you conspiracy theorists out there, you'll love this one. The Club of Rome is one of those conspiracy theory groups that's up there with the Trilateral Commission and And the Illuminati. The Illuminati and and all that. So they actually published Mm -hmm. a plan and this is this is a, a Newly updated one, Ooh. which uh, I've, I've got a little uh, floor plan for you here oh. of the whole earth divided up into 10 economic unions. So, up in the dark blue, you've got the European Union, yeah. Um, but then we've got the North American Union, mm-hmm. the Central American Union. Right. The South American Union. Mm-hmm. The African Union. Right. Uh, the Middle Eastern Union. The Russian Union. Mm. The South Asian Union. The East Asian Union, mm-hmm. which is like India and the stands. Mm-hmm. And then the little old Pacific Union, which is uh, it's Australia and New Zealand and a couple of 
islands. So I immediately see a problem with this plan. Yeah. The word union. Yes. <laughs> the Middle That's East it. Union. You, I think you lost me there. Yeah. Well, I mean, that might give them their caliphate. <laughs> but um, the you know uh, we're struggling to hold the European Union together. Yeah. But ten economic zones for the whole world. It's it's a possibility. Yeah, you could work in theory, but it would be like a very tenuous. It would be like a trade agreement. I definitely don't think nations are going to drop their national, you know, identities and borders to become part of a worldwide government. Okay, well, I've got another theory. <laughs> so here's another theory that gets thrown around, a revived Roman Empire. Ooh, this is yeah. exciting. Yeah, so the, the Roman Empire stretched from all the way uh, down past Arabia, all the way into Britain, mm. all across Northern Africa, maybe we're going to see the rise of, you know, like, because it was the legs of iron mm. and then the feet of iron and clay with the ten toes is the ten kingdoms. Yeah. So maybe it's the Roman Empire coming back. So does that mean the Catholic Church is going to have its own private army again? Well, again, it's another theory. <laughs> mm. Now, I've got to say... Mm. I don't think any of these theories are right. Right. Yeah. I think it's 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 interesting. In Revelation 17, verse 9 to 12, it says, This calls for a mind with wisdom. Mm -hmm. And it then goes on to say, The seven heads are seven hills on which the woman sits, or mm -hmm. seven mountains on which the woman sits. Mm. They are also seven hills kings mm -hmm. all right so it's saying that there are that the seven hills mm -hmm. are seven kings yeah and then it goes on and it says five have fallen yeah. now, now remember mm. where this is being written this has been written in the height of the roman empire thank you five have fallen one is one is the other has not yet come but when it does come he must remain. He, mm -hmm. he, so we could relate this back to that little horn. Yeah. Must remain for only a little while. Mm -hmm. How long? Maybe so you're time, times and half a time? Yeah, we're talking about a singular leader <coughs> yeah. rising up and, and only being in power for three years. And this is where it puts it all together because it says the beast who once was mm -hmm. and was and now is not, sorry. Oh. is the eighth king. Right. And he belongs to the seven and he's going to his destruction. So, he once was, now is not. Rome was in power when this was been written. So, so it's not Rome. No, okay. <laughs> so, let's do a little bit of hip historical mathematics here. Alright? Mm. So, we, as you said, that Rome... Mm. was there at the time because it said five have fallen mm -hmm. one now is so we we can say rome is number six is number six so if we count back now mm -hmm. from rome mm -hmm. number five greece number four persia number three babylon now we know that that is the case that's okay? right now there are only two more um, uh, empires that are listed in scripture mm -hmm. prior to the Babylonian Empire. Ooh, I think I might know who they are. Do you want to have a guess? Would it be Assyria? Yes, that mm -hmm. is one. And do you want to have a guess at the last one? Would it be... Is it either Egypt or the Chaldean? It's Egypt. Egypt. Yes. Right. Because they're, they're all ones that had encounter and mm. oppress Israel. Yeah. So yes, we can put Egypt and Assyria mm. as the only other two, at least scriptural mm. empires mm. that exist. So there we have five that were. Yeah. And one that is. Mm -hmm. Is that interesting? That is interesting. All right. And one so, so now we've got to go to a seventh empire. Mm -hmm. But we're told that after that seventh empire, there's going to be an eighth. Who was, but is now not, 
but, but then will, will be. be. Exactly. So let's put that in there for now. An eight beast kingdom who was, now is not, but will be. So it's one of those first five. Yeah. So let's mm. have a look. The ten horns on which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom as yet. Oh. So we're talking about powers, mm -hmm. realms of authority, that at the time that this was written had not yet been put in place. Right. Now it goes on to say, but they receive authority for how long? One hour. As king with the beast. As kings with the beast. So they're given the authority mm. for the purpose of handing the authority to the beast. To the beast. Wow, that's a that's a short stint. Yes. <laughs> These are of one mind and they will give their power and authority to the beast. So right. that that is the purpose of their creation. Mm. Alright? So going back to our list, we now know that the seventh kingdom mm. is a future kingdom of ten, ten kings, kings for one hour right wow right because they're going to give their power mm -hmm. these are of one mind they will give their power and authority to the beast yeah okay now revelation 17 verse 18 mm -hmm. tells us and the woman Remember, if you want to know who it is, mm -hmm. you read, read a few read a few of us. <laughs> <laughs> it just holds true. Yeah. And the woman whom you saw is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. And you go, mm. so one what, city. What, yeah. Now, now typically you might say, well, the great city. Well, in those days, that was right. Rome. But it's telling us that Rome's going to be gone. But And yet, when the city is named in Revelation, it's called Babylon. And that's the thing, is again, if it tells you, mm. you don't have to go looking. Mm. And that's the thing. In verses 3 to 5, before all of this, it tells us, mm -hmm. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw mm -hmm. a, a woman. woman. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having her in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead, a name was written. Mm -hmm. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. She must have a very large forehead. Yeah, yeah. It's or, just like this massive or it's very small writing. <laughs> I'm not sure. But the point is this. Yeah. The scripture tells us... Yeah. It's Babylon. Now, mm. now, we're going to play that game again now, aren't we? Yeah. Well, when it says Babylon, uh, does yeah, it yeah. really mean Babylon? Because where is Babylon now? Is that Afghanistan or Iraq? Iraq. Iraq. Yeah. And they're not doing so good right now. No. No, they're not. But, he's, but this is the thing with all of this. Mm. It tells us that the woman is... Babylon um, the Great, mm. the mother of harlots, and of the the mother, so it's the mother of harlots mm -hmm. and the mother of the abominations of the earth. Right. Okay. Yeah. Now, you only have to go and do a cursory study mm -hmm. of all of the, um, you know, the the various S gods oh, and the astrology. Oh, the, yeah, and yeah. and. You know, the various gods, everything from the Viking gods, the mm -hmm. Romans, mm -hmm. and the Greeks, mm -hmm. and the Egyptians, and it all runs home to Babylon. Absolutely. And we're not talking about Babylon, the third kingdom. Mm. We're talking about Babylon, the city, with the tower. Tower of Babel. With That's Nimrod. It. Yeah. The... It's uh, so the first city built after the flood, the great Babylon. Yeah, that's it. So yeah. the so what we know is that there is going to be a rising of Babylon the Great. Right. A a great occult 
power that seeks that, to unify all people. And he's, he's going to, for a time, times and half a time, mm -hmm. rule the earth. Right. Wow. So when we're looking at this eighth kingdom, mm -hmm. we can actually say mm -hmm. New Babylon. New Babylon. Wow. Because Babylon itself, doesn't that just mean New Babel? Yeah. yeah. So it is the Tower of Babel, you know, at the beginning, the middle, and then the end. Yes. So whatever this Babylon is, hmm. we're not saying that it's the Vatican it's, it, or, yeah. you know, or, the, or Rome rising or, hmm. or um, you know, it, it, look, could it be the Club of Rome thing playing out? Maybe. It's going mm. to have the power of the whole world. Mm -hmm. Maybe we will see the world drop into ten economic systems that, mm. that in the in this moment give its power mm. to the beast. Maybe it's going to play out like that. But the point is that the whole earth will end up under the authority mm. of this new system called Babylon. Wow! wow. And everything. And again. Just like we recognize the empires by, like the names of the empires by the beasts, mm -hmm. we can do the same thing in reverse. We can recognize this Babylon by its its nature, yeah. which is the, the source mm. of all of the great occult power, the harlotry against God. Mm. that permeated throughout the earth from that tower. Which is, which is, oh, what's that thing about the image of the beast? Like the thing that spoke, yep. spoke like a lamb, but it was ferocious like a lion. What's the, you know, the harking back? Oh, i got to remember. Yeah, that, that. in Revelation, are you talking about? Like yeah, that? yeah, yeah. So there's, there's something that, uh, there's another creature that gets mentioned that's, that's got the attributes of a lion and a lamb. So it speaks softly, but it's actually ferocious. Mm, I'm not sure what you're talking about. We'll have to have a look at it for next week. Yeah, yeah. So I hope for, for all of you guys watching tonight, that's been helpful. Mm. Um, the, the purpose of going through this is to start to show you how you can use the knowledge of what we learn, where things are clearly stated, when it says it, you don't have to go looking for other meanings. You don't have to make it up. You can actually um, figure it out from what the scripture clearly and specifically and explicitly mm. states. Mm. So um, uh, I hope that that's been uh, helpful and useful. Mm. Um, I'm just wondering if there's anyone that's got any questions. Far away. Have, have there been any questions that have come up at all, ladies, as we've been going through? Maybe not. I'm just having a look through. Um, but I, I hope you found that interesting. As usual, we're going to hang around for a little while and uh, answer any questions that you might have. But now's your moment. If you've got a, a cool question that you want to throw out while we're online, mm. please feel free to do so. Mm. Uh, we, we love doing this. The whole purpose that we're doing this series is that we want to... Uh, equip you and give you knowledge about these things because whatever you believe mm -hmm. about the future is going to shape yep. what you do today. Absolutely. Yeah. But um, at the at the point of uh, not getting any other questions coming through, I guess we can say yeah. good night and God bless you. Remember, Jesus is coming soon. And we love and, you very much. And <laughs> if we don't see you next week, then uh, we will see you in the air. Mm -hmm. uh, if if uh, Jesus comes back between now and then, we can find out how much Ben and I've got right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you all. And uh, God willing, we will see you next week. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. See ya. Young people are talking about Jesus. He's the subject of conversation today.